Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby with another Powerful Point to Ponder here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us today as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Well, uh, let's conclude our thought for the week, and that is the other little ships. And we've been looking at the various ships that are in the convoy that was with Jesus, that followed him as he went across the Sea of Galilee with his disciples. Mark tells us that there were with Jesus other little ships. And we've looked at some of those other little ships. Remember what those other little ships are. We've looked at, for example, membership and worship and fellowship and stewardship. Now here's the last ship and this ship, well, you might not like this ship, but it's part of the convoy that we have to do with as Christians. And that is hardship, hardship. We will have hardship. In fact, this whole story about the other little ships is a story about hardship. Let's look at the story one more time. Mark chapter four, verse 35 says, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, unto them let us pass over unto the other side. And when they, had, when, he, when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Now we are told that in verse 37, that the disciples were in a storm, a storm. There were other little ships out there. And all those ships, those other little ships were in a storm with Jesus. And we are told it was a great storm. That word great is the Greek word seismos, S-E-I-Z-M-O-S, -S, seismos. And you've heard of a seismograph, perhaps. A seismograph is an instrument used to measure the intensity of an earthquake. So this was not some mild storm. This was a huge, threatening storm, wave after wave after wave after wave. In fact, we are told that the waves were filling the boat. There was great danger and potential peril for the disciples, along with the other little ships that were caught up in the storm with them. Now, I think this lesson, talking about hardship, teaches us something about hardships, or it teaches us something about storms. First of all, it teaches us that storms are inevitable. They are inevitable. We will one day have a storm in our life, and we never know when those storms will come. They are inevitable. Secondly, storms are unpredictable. When those disciples got in that boat with Jesus, they did not know that they were going to experience a storm. And you never know when a storm will come. You never know when some upsetting, disruptive uh, activity or event may come into your life. In fact, look at verse 37 again. Verse 37 says uh, that there arose a great storm of wind there arose. It just arose. And problems just arise. You just never know what's going to rise up in your life. And here they ar there arises a great storm. Storms are inevitable. Storms, too, are unpredictable. And three, storms are impartial. Do not think that just because you are a Christian and living in obedience to God, that you will be exempt from storms. In fact, the reason why these disciples are in a storm is not because they've disobeyed God. They're in a storm because they have obeyed 
God. Would you look at verse 35 again? Verse 35 says, And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Jesus saith unto them, let us pass over onto the other side. So the reason they're in a storm is because they got in the boat and obeyed Jesus and said, let us pass over on the other side. Do not think that just because you are a Christian that you won't have hardship. Hardship is one of the ships in the caravan, the other little ships. They're in a storm because they obey Jesus. So storms are inevitable. Storms are unpredictable. Suddenly a storm arose. Storms are impartial. Now, I want you to notice that when they're in this storm, what Jesus is doing, we are told that Jesus is resting. He is in the ship with them, on the boat with them, but he is asleep. He's asleep. Verse 38 says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, asleep on a pillow. He is sleeping in the midst of the storm. What does that mean? That means that Jesus has something that he wants to pass on to us, and that is peace. Now, while Jesus has peace in the storm, the disciples are going to pieces in the midst of the storm. Jesus has peace. They have panic. Now, what was it about Jesus that, that gave him the peace that we can have in the midst of our storms? Because we will have storms. We will have hardships. What do we need to remember that can give us peace in the midst of a storm? First of all, we have to remember God's presence. What should have calmed their nerves was one fact. Jesus was in the boat. He was in the boat with them. In fact, the disciples should have been calmer than the people in the other little ships because they didn't have Jesus in the boat with them. Something is contradictory when people who don't have Jesus in their boat with them are kinder than we are, have more peace than we do, have more confidence than we do. Something is wrong when they have, when they out Christian us and we've got Jesus in the boat with us. Well, it's easy to forget in the middle of a storm, God's presence. God was in the boat with them. Jesus is in the boat with them. And Jesus is in the boat with you, my friend. God's presence. Secondly, God's promise. God's promise. Now, where do we find a promise in this story? Well, go back to verse 35 and you'll see a promise. It says, and the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over onto the other side. What did Jesus say to them? He said, we're going to the other side. He did not say they, didn't, they would not have a storm en route to the other side. He said, other side. Now, Jesus said to them that, look, Jesus said, we're going over to the other side. He did not say that we are going under. He said, we're going over. So even though they're in the midst of the storm, they should have hung on to the promise of God. Jesus said, we're going on the other side. And you need to hang on to the promises of God in the midst of your hardship and tell yourself, I'm going to get through this. Uh, it's, a, it's a terrible storm. It's a great storm. It's a seismo storm, but I'm going to the other side. He didn't say, let's go under. He said, let's go over. Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 2 reads this. Listen to what Isaiah says. He says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. The key word is that word through. You will, by the grace of God, because of the presence of God and the promises of God, you will get through it. You'll get through the hardship. But there's a third thing the disciples forgot. They forgot that Jesus was in the boat with them, right? He was in the boat. He was asleep, but he's still in the boat. They forgot the promise, let us go over on the other side. And then this is what they forgot. They forgot the power of God, the power of Jesus. Because what does Jesus do when they wake him up? And they and if they did, they, they made a lot of mistakes. But one thing they did right 
was they woke up Jesus and they asked Jesus, did he care? And he is, it says in verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillar and they awake him and say unto him, they're praying, master, do you care that we perish? Do you care? And that's the one thing they did right. In the midst of your storm, talk to God, tell God how you feel. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. Do you know why there was great calm? Because of the power of God, the presence of God and the power of God. And they said, oh, my God, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey his will? I think one of the reasons why God allowed them to have this storm was so they could get a clearer picture of who Jesus really was. Uh, and they said, what manner of man is this? Who is this? And Jesus is highlighting to them that he is God. That's what he's trying to say to them. And there they are slowly coming to a deeper understanding of who Jesus is. And sometimes storms do that for us. Storms help us to really understand who God is, of the, the, his promises, his presence, and his power, hardship. Well, you remember I told you that uh, there are four facts about the storms. Remember what those three facts are? I've given you three of them. And this is what you need to know. And you see it in the story. The storms are inevitable, right? That sooner or later, you'll have a storm in your life. They just come. And then secondly, storms are unpredictable. There arose and you never know what may arose from day to day. Don't park your emotions on a bad situation, on a bad storm. Don't park there, keep on going. They're unpredictable, they're impartial. These disciples got into the boat because Jesus said, let's go over on the, on the other side. They obeyed God and they still experienced the storm and you will also. But the fourth thing you should never forget about your storm that can just make you holler hallelujah. And that is this, not only are storms inevitable, not only are storms unpredictable, not only are storms impartial, hear me, storms are temporary. They don't last always. And that is why you gotta keep your mind, you gotta keep your confidence because this too, shall pass. And sometimes the storm you hate, the wind that's blowing you, guess what? It may have blown you, not off course, but it may have blown you right to where God wants you to be. God uses storms to get us to where God wants us to be. There was a fellow in the Old Testament named Joseph. He had a storm, storm after storm after storm. Storm blew him to prison, blew him to Egypt, blew him into slavery. But that same storm blew him into a position as second in command over all of Egypt. And sometimes God uses a storm to blow you where you need to be. And you look back over that storm and say, I didn't understand why you allowed me to have the storm. But God, you know what you're doing. And I want to thank you for the storm. Listen, there were other little ships. And one of the little ships that you will find in the convoy when you follow Jesus is hardship. But remember, remember God's presence. Remember God's promise. Remember God's power. You'll get through this. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this entire week and these other little ships that are in the convoy. I pray, oh Lord, that someone who's listening will have peace in their heart right now because you never abandon us. You're always with us. You love us. You always have. And even the hardships that come help us mature. The hardships help us grow. That We don't know why we have them. They come unexpectedly, but you use them the wind to blow us to where we need to be. Oh God, give us more faith in you. Thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus name, amen. Well, I wanna thank you for being with me this week uh, on these powerful points to ponder. We've been doing them now way over a year 
And I've gotten so many comments from you about how it's been a blessing to you. And I am glad it is an honor to uh, be able to share the word of God with you as God gives me the word to share with you. It all comes from God. And I'm just a mailman, hopefully delivering some news you can use. But look, I appreciate you so much. Uh, tomorrow is the Lord's Day. We gather for worship. And I hope you'll be with us and invite someone, do the work of evangelism, invite someone to join us uh, in worship uh, at St. Stephen Church. And look, if you don't have a church, and we'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church and contact us, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Well, peace and blessings to you always. I hope you enjoy your Saturday. I hope to see you tomorrow in worship. It begins at nine o'clock with uh, Miss Crystal Goodner Spratt, who's just amazing. And then we'll actually begin the worship at 9.30, but tune in to the pre-worship experience at nine o'clock. Uh, that'll be a blessing to you also. So you have a great Saturday. And until we gather for worship uh, tomorrow morning, don't forget that during COVID-19 to stay safe and stay sane and never forget, never forget that God is in control. Take care and be blessed. See you tomorrow.